J. Allen Hack, who, as we all know, has had a bad history of public relations, had to say something. Especially since crawling through women's cubicles while drunk at work and touching them, or kicking women out of lactation rooms, wasn't even the worst things in the lawsuit. This was his response. We're sorry. We're sorry. I came to an epiphany about the Blizzard lawsuit after hearing more and more of the stories coming out. From the woman who was asked by Blizzard guys if she liked being penetrated while she was looking for a job. To the manager who joked at a company meeting that employees should sleep with their female assistants. Good one, dude. And then it dawned on me. The offenders working at Blizzard are a bunch of fucking nerds. They were the gamers who never learned how to properly socialize in high school, probably virgins, who have been elevated to a pseudo-celebrity status by working at a company that, through the growth of gaming, has become more love to people than Snoop Dogg. <laughs> the fame gets to their heads, and Blizzard's not the only company. Like when the head of player behavior for Riot Games, you know, the guy trying to improve toxicity in League of Legends, was in a sex scandal between his wife, a 19-year-old co-worker, and a few others. In fact, Riot settled a big discrimination lawsuit in 2019. It's why it was no real surprise to me that Blizzard's former president and Mountain from Yoshi's Island, J. Allen Brack, who always seemed like he belonged behind the desk at a hobby shop instead of the head of a major company, kinda just let things slide. Maybe he just wanted to be one of the boys. And while Blizzard's talking thumb did step down from his position on paper, he appears to be the fall guy at the tip of a much, much larger shitberg. To replace him were two relatively new co-leaders. A guy who, you know, actually plays WoW, and a woman. Nice move, Activision. Nice move. So Blizzard Entertainment went from having a CEO, to a president, to co-leaders. Seems like Activision Blizzard's CEO, Bobby Don't Put Horns on My Head Kotick, is slowly tightening his grip on the likes of Blizzard while losing his grip on, well, just about everything else. The head of HR is gone. You know, the department whose job it is to make sure employees treat each other with respect? Yeah, he deleted his Twitter and disappeared with no comment from the company. But it's rumored if you cry the name Jesse Meschuk three times in a row to a mirror at night, he'll appear to say that you're being overdramatic and then deny you a promotion. The torture apologist that we all know and love, Fran the Flames, who endured years of brutal politics, but after just two weeks in the gaming industry Thunderdome, stepped down and also deleted her Twitter account. I guess sending your tweets to the Shadow Realm is the only way to make sure they go away forever. And by doing so, Frantic Fran increased Blizzard's damage mitigation significantly. Although it's pretty obvious she did this more to protect herself from mean tweets rather than the image of her company because she was already blocking the employees she was supposed to be helping on Twitter. Three days after the lawsuit was made public, Fran, the then leader of the Women's Network, held a Zoom call with female employees to hear their stories. The call reached a maximum capacity of over 500 people wanting to join in and listen. So Blizzard promised to record it and then share with the rest of them later. But after the meeting, they refused to uphold their relatively simple promise. Their reasoning? It was not appropriate to share the sad, personal stories of victims. The same stories that were just shared in a meeting with 500 people. In the same meeting which Fran allegedly defended her initial statement that the whistleblowers were essentially lying. You know what I think happened? The stories of the victims were so appalling, and Fran's meeting was such a shit show that Blizzard didn't want to risk it getting out to the press. And just like that, the strong female leader the company needed in this desperate time stepped down from her position that same day. And I just can't imagine how hard she got flamed in that call. I'm not gonna read off every story of sexual assault because I prefer to make videos under 24 hours here on YouTube, but again, just so bad if you look. But it gets even worse for Blizzard. 
They're losing sponsors left and right for their already struggling esports league, including T-Mobile, State Farm, Coca-Cola, and Kellogg's. Which is a real shame because now we're not going to know what snacks to eat while we enjoy watching the death of the most unnaturally forced esports scene of all time. And to anyone saying Overwatch 2 will revive it, this just in, its release got pushed back another year. But by far the worst case scenario happened to Blizzard to add on to what has already been a pretty shit two weeks. Their investors, you know, the guys whose money they want to grow their company. Mr. Kotick, help, Tammy got touched at the Christmas party. Go away. Their investors sued Activision Blizzard for withholding information about the gender discrimination investigation that was taking place for the last two years. Mr. Kotick, HR won't listen to me. Please help. Shut up. And if you know anything about being an investor, this kind of information is supposed to be made visible to them. The margarita machine in the office broke again. Well, fix it and then buy more Activision Blizzard stock. If the short-term stock prices are any indication, or the long-term behavior of players and content creators across the board... To have it all crumble around me because perverted mid-30-year-old and 40-year-old men can't keep their fucking hands to themselves! And it's why the game sucks too! The investors may very well have a case on their hands, which means Blizzard has not one, but two shit droids to deal with. And to top it all off, the upcoming mobile game Diablo Immortal got delayed. Is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? I think Blizzard has finally stabilized from a PR standpoint and is now correctly following the Corporate for Dummies book. They're silent on all social media accounts, probably scared to fuck up again as they should be. But rest assured if they do, I'll be here waiting to shine my light of justice on the assholes of the gaming world for no profit. And as always, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Coach out.